Check. Can you guys hear me okay? Fantastic. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us for uh, the second session where we've been uh, introducing the Lairdal Sonosim ultrasound solution. As you know, uh, ultrasound has become an integral part of patient workups and diagnostic decision making. Um, I don't know who's been to an OB recently, but they have a machine in their office and they're using it to assess the baby, to assess the mother, and to make sure that everything is okay. Uh, in many parts of the world, this is the only instrument that's available to a midwife. It's a fetoscope, and it's placed against the patient's abdomen, and you put your ear to it, and you listen for the baby's heartbeat. But unfortunately, uh, across the world, mater maternal fetal mortality is so high because of undiagnosed conditions that you can't pick up just by your physical examination or by listening to the baby. Things like how many babies are there, uh, picking up obstructed labor, the location of the placenta. Mothers bleed to death and babies die, and it's really unfortunate because empowering midwives or physicians and other clinicians with the knowledge of how to use an ultrasound device could save lives. Sonosim is paired up with Lairdal uh, and the uh, Sim Mom technology over here, and we're going to be showing you a case presentation. This is a real case that occurred, and this was a woman who did not know that she was pregnant. She had a, a, a big body habitus, um, and she presented to the trauma department uh, in shock. And it was our job as clinicians to figure out what was going on. So um, my name is Dan Katz. I am a physician. I'm an ER doc at Cedar sinai Medical Center. This was one of the cases that we saw, and it's, uh, it's a pleasure for me to, uh, to go through it with you guys. So here we go. Again, so we've just received a patient uh, in the trauma bay, and she is hypotensive. She's just been hit by a car. Guys, let's go. Let's get her clothes off. Okay. So I'm seeing that she's got a lot of bruising here in the left upper quadrant and in the chest, actually some crepitus of the chest wall. How are we doing? Good breath sounds bilaterally. Abdomen is distended. She's, she's a bit obese, can't really tell what's going on over here. Um, guys, uh, let's go ahead and hang some fluids, and I'm going to do a EFAST assessment. EFAST stands for Extended Sonography and Trauma Exam, and what I'm doing right now is I'm assessing the patient's heart. We can see that she's actually got vigorous cardiac activity. This is the real ultrasound image that came from that patient at that time. Looking here at the right upper quadrant, this is really abnormal. Hey guys, we're going to need a massive transfusion protocol initiated, please. She's got fluid around her uh, liver. You can see her diaphragm over there. There's blood in her abdomen. Looking here at the opposite side of her chest, she's got fluid around her spleen and her kidney. I'm going to look down here at her belly. And this was actually the first time we found out that this woman was pregnant. She didn't know that. So we see here a live fetus. Frederica, we're going to need to call OB as well. Just let him know. Uh, and let's get that blood hanging. Now, Shannon had been listening to her lungs, and he, she said that he had, she had good breath sounds bilaterally. But when we do the ultrasound over here, we can appreciate that there's lung sliding or movement of the lung on the right side. When we look at the left side, there's actually no uh, motion of the lung. Uh, Mo, we need to put a chest tube in here. Recall the patient had evidence of bruising to her left chest. She had crepitus when I was palpating it. She's got a pneumothorax. We're of course gonna order a confirmatory chest x-ray, but at this point, we can start preparing for the uh, chest tube. Uh, again, as they're, uh, they're preparing to insert the chest tube, they're connecting her to blood. She is, uh, she's hemorrhaging. We're looking at her vital signs over here. She's tacky at 129. Her oxygen saturation is low. And we're using ultrasound as part of our diagnostic decision making. Why is her oxygen saturation low? It could be because she's got a collapsed lung. She could have pulmonary contusion. But she's also hypotensive and tachycardic, and so she could be hypoperfusing. Our first intervention is going to be to place a chest tube in Sim Mom right now. And I can continue to do serial assessments of the patient's abdomen to see if additional blood is gathering up in her right upper quadrant. Here we're looking at Morrison's pouch. And again, you can see some uh, fluid that's layering right around the, uh, uh, the liver. So we have our chest tube is in, and we're going to call for a confirmatory x-ray. We can also assess for adequate chest tube placement with ultrasound, and we'll get to that in just a second over here. How are we doing on our vital signs? So she's actually desaturating. Guys, we need to get ready to intubate her. 
because the chest tube is in and it's already pulling some, some of the, re-expanding the lung, but she's still desaturating and she's still quite unstable. So Mo, can you hold uh, inline technique over here? Stabilize the neck. Fantastic. As they're doing this, I have just a few minutes to, uh, to continue my assessment of the uh, patient's abdomen. And uh, here again, what we're seeing is a baby with uh, uh, a heart rate. Uh, the heart rate seems to be probably, gosh, about 140. So baby's doing okay, despite the fact that mom is, uh, is hypotensive. What we can do at this point is also try to get an assessment of the fetal age, right? Because if this baby is viable, there may need to be uh, a, a need to deliver uh, immediately. So we're gonna capture an image. I know there's a, a lot of adrenaline rushing now for me, for everybody who's here on stage. I'll just uh, capture one of our images over here and try to understand what's going on with this baby. Bring on our calipers, check a head circumference measurement. We'll drop a caliper from here to here. We'll drop another caliper from here to here. And I know this is not ideal for those of you who can, uh, can discern that in the audience, but this is, this is matching up to approximately a 19-week baby not viable, not someone that we would actually do a perimortem cesarean section in. Um, how are we doing here? Fantastic. Okay, so we got blood flowing. We have our oxygen saturation increasing now from 89% to 95%. And this is a patient that at this point we'd be alerting the, uh, the operating room. She needs to go up to the OR so we can uh, decide where these internal injuries are coming from. We have OB on standby to decide what to do with this baby. Uh, again, based on the initial ultrasound scan, doesn't look like it's a viable uh, uh, pregnancy at this time, uh, but uh, we need the additional expertise from OB at that bedside. So again, as pertaining to this particular case, you had the opportunity to see how we took a, a real life scenario, a patient who came in hypotensive, uh, in shock from trauma. We were very quick to pick up the fact that she had free fluid in her abdomen we didn't know that she was pregnant, but we picked up the pregnancy. We immediately recognized the fact that she had a left pneumothorax, which was then confirmed on the chest x-ray. As the chest x-ray was uh, coming, we already had put in the chest tube, and this is a patient who was saved. Um, and you got to see it uh, reenacted over here. The next case that we're gonna uh, perform for you guys is uh, one that uh, goes through diagnostic decision-making and more of a medical scenario. Uh, those of you who were with us yesterday got to see how uh, we did a trauma scenario on Simman and then a case of a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm where we went through in a systematic fashion trying to understand why the patient had undifferentiated shock. So in this particular case, this is a woman who was in yoga class and who fainted. And let's just say for... Uh, to make everybody happy that we had saved our trauma patients, so she's now doing yoga in a class, um, and she fainted. And women during pregnancy um, can have a lot of serious issues that can arise. As you know, they can form blood clots, and those blood clots can go to the heart or to the lungs and cause a pulmonary embolism. Uh, some may suffer from cardiomyopathy in third trimester. Um, they, of course, may be subject to trauma uh, and have hemorrhage. Someone who faints, you need to figure out why it is that they've just fainted, and, uh, and you need to do it in a pretty expeditious fashion in the emergency department. So again, another case, this one is a happy case, uh, but we're gonna go through and, and figure out why this young lady fainted. So, here we go. Hi, Frederica, how are you? I'm not doing so good. I'm what happened? I'm dizzy, I, I, I think I fainted, maybe? And uh, were you standing up in the yoga class when you fainted? No, no, it was at the end of my yoga class, and I, I, I was laying down, and it was just, stars were everywhere, and I was just out. And did you have any chest pain or any difficulty breathing? Not at all. I feel good. I feel great. Okay. Have you had any vaginal bleeding or any fluid come out? No, nope, nothing at all. Okay. And had you eaten breakfast or drank any fluids today before your class? No, not so much. Okay, no problem. We're going to take a little bit care of you and we're going to try to figure out why you fainted. So, guys, at this point, let's uh, hang some fluids and we're going to do an examination here and try to figure out what's wrong with, uh, with Frederica. So, again, our traditional examination would involve our stethoscope, our hands, as we assess the patient. We can listen to her lungs. We can assess her cardiac activity. 
and we can palpate her abdomen and try to figure out what's going on. But with ultrasound, we can get a much better look at what's happening. So let's start ruling out some of these conditions that we were talking about. And uh, excuse me one second right over here. So we'll start with a heart. Here we're looking at the uh, heart in a parasternal position. It's contracting quite vigorously. We're actually going to go to a slightly different view. This is the uh, apical four-chamber view of the heart. And from this view, what you can tell is that there's no evidence of fluid around the heart. There's no evidence of heart strain, such as what you would see with a pulmonary embolism. And she doesn't seem to have a cardiomyopathy. She seems to have a, a nice, vigorously contracting heart. Looking at the patient's lungs, we can assess for pulmonary edema. We don't see any beeline artifact uh, in the scan, which is an ultrasonographic finding of pulmonary edema. We'll look here at her right upper quadrant. And as opposed to our other case where we saw a lot of free fluid, completely normal, liver and kidney. Looking at the opposite side over here, again, normal spleen and normal kidney. And as we look here at her inferior vena cava, it's actually quite collapsed. This is a patient who's fluid down. And she's laying on her back. The baby's pushing on her IVC. This is likely somebody who's got IVC syndrome. So guys, why don't we go ahead and roll her to her side? Fantastic. And we're also going to connect her to the fetal monitor as well at this point. Now the fluids are hanging and her heart rate is, is uh, slowly, slowly starting to, uh, to decrease. And at this point I can also do an assessment of the baby's uh, of the baby and how the baby is doing. So we see here that the uh, placenta is uh, quite uh, anteriorly located. Again, if you think about what's important to assess with ultrasonography in pregnancy, it's how's the baby doing? How's the fetal heart rate? How many babies are there? Is there amniotic fluid? Um, where's the placenta located? Is it low? In which case the, uh, the mother has a higher risk of bleeding. Uh, and what is the fetal presentation? Is this a breech uh, presentation or is the baby uh, baby's head down. So again, we're looking here at the uh, at the patient's at the baby. We see a normal heart. We'll look down here at the patient's uh, bladder, and we see a pretty full bladder. There's uh, enough amniotic fluid that we're seeing over here. We can check the baby's head up top. So this is in fact a breech presentation, which is important to know. And as we check the baby's heart, if we wanted to, we could perform a measurement of the fetal, uh, fetal age based on this, uh, uh, this image that we're seeing here on screen. So again, two cases that you got to see today where we have figured out that the patient is uh, dehydrated in this case. That's all that happened. That was her reason for syncope, inferior vena cava syndrome. Not a PE, not, a, not a pulmonary edema from a cardiomyopathy, but just simply someone who hadn't hydrated before her course today. Um, we're very excited about this product and to be working with Lairdal. Uh, please feel free to, to uh, come up on stage and, and check it out. I know that Lairdal is also going to be doing a simulation uh, on their birthing simulator down there. So uh, feel free to stick around and we're here for uh, any questions. Thanks very much.